Hello and welcome to this tutorial on UTP cabling. Unshielded Twisted Pair. That's what UTP stands for. And this cabling type is used by the three most common Ethernet standards you'll find around the world today. Those are Ethernet, Fast Ethernet, and Gigabit Ethernet. If you haven't yet viewed the tutorials on Ethernet, the different standards, it would be worth your while to have a look at them as well. So it's good to know cabling and understand how it works because oftentimes you're going to have to choose the right cable in order to connect devices and understanding how the cables transmit data, what's inside the cables, it's all important to know and you'll see why when we jump into this. So we're going to take a quick look at exactly what is this cable, what's inside. We'll take a look at the RJ45 connector and how that is used to terminate ends of a UTP cable. We'll move on and we'll get into some interesting stuff on how data is actually transmitted. And once we cover this bit, you'll really understand um, the makeup and why a cable is constructed the way it is. It's very interesting. Finally, we'll take a look at the pinouts. And that is perhaps one of the most important aspects we'll cover because the pinouts uh, enable you to identify the type of UTP cable you are dealing with. So let's get started. Okay, here we have a picture of a UTP cable. And you'll notice there's a flexible outer jacket. That's the gray plastic type of plastic coating around the cable. And this is a flexible outer jacket. And inside there are eight wires. And these are thin wires, copper wires. And each one is color coded. And that color coding is very important because it enables you to identify each wire within the cable. And you'll see in a few minutes why that is so useful. So there is some insulation on here, but this is unshielded. There isn't a lot of insulation. When you talk about shielded twisted pair, or STP, that has more shielding in it, and it prevents electrical frequency interference. So perhaps if you're running a lot of cables near electric motors or fluorescent lights, perhaps a shielded twisted pair would protect the signals on the UTP better than perhaps using unshielded twisted pair. More often than not, you'll be working with unshielded twisted pair, so that's what we'll be focusing on in this tutorial. So there you have it. You've probably seen and dealt with these numerous times already. That is the obligatory picture of a UTP cable. So let's move on to the RJ45 connector. Okay, here we have an RJ45 connector. RJ stands for regular jacket, and an RJ45 has eight slots in it, one for each of the eight wires in a UTP cable, and these are referred to as the pin positions. And in just a few moments, we'll see why the wire placement in those pin positions, or the order, is so important to making up the cable and how it functions. You'll be able to see many examples of RJ45 ports. Now, the port is what this connector plugs into, and if you haven't already, you can take a look at a network interface card, a NIC on the back of a PC. You can look at any hub or switch. Those are all RJ45 ports. And some interfaces on a router will have RJ45 ports as well. The RJ45 is similar to an RJ11. And the RJ11 is used uh, for the connector of a standard telephone wire. The difference is it's a little bit narrower. Okay, so let's move on to how data is actually transmitted on a UTP cable. This is an illustration of a UTP cable, and we're only showing four wires, but keep in mind there are eight, just for simplicity of this diagram. You're going to notice that there are pairs, and they are twisted, just like you see here. And that's where the twisted pair comes from in the name unshielded twisted pair. Well, why, why do they do that? First, it's important to understand when two devices are connected over this cable, there is an electrical circuit, and that's created over the pair. So essentially, each wire in the pair has a current on it. So this pair, it's two wires, there's a current running on each pair in opposite directions. 
and this signal, this current, is varied. It's fluctuated in order to indicate ones and zeros, bits, and that's how the how the, that's how the information is actually transmitted. But when you have a current running over a wire, a magnetic field is created on each wire, and this magnetic field it creates noise and it can interfere with other wires. So the reason why the, the wires are twisted like this is that that twisting actually negates the magnetic fields on each of the two wires. So on the bottom here, if you imagine, you know, you've got this magnetic field around each, each of these two wires here. Well, the twisting actually helps uh, eliminate that magnetic field. And the number of twists per inch equals a greater ability to eliminate the interference. And also, the tighter the twists, actually how well it's actually done, equates to a better performance in the transmission of data over that pair. It also means there's a higher cost per foot of the UTP cable you're interested in uh, when the twists are tighter. So it's, it's, it's a quality difference. 10 base T and 100 base T require two pairs of the four pairs in total to communicate. And 1000 base T actually requires all four pairs or it uses all eight wires. And you're going to hear something about categories of wire. And these categories were not actually created by the I3E like you would perhaps suspect because they came up with Ethernet. They, they control those standards. But the EIA-TIA, which stands for Electronic Industry Association, Telecommunication Industry Association, they're the ones who came up with these categories. And essentially they mean, they, they indicate what kind of speed you can push, what kind of performance you can push over these UTP cables. So CAT3, category 3, is sufficient for 10 base T. CAT5 is sufficient for 100 base T and 1000 base T. CAT5E is actually a bit more enhanced for 1000 base T. So you'll see those and you want to make sure you get the right kind of cabling depending on which Ethernet standard you're using. Okay, so let's have a look now at the pinouts of a UTP cable. Okay, here we have an illustration of an RJ45 connector and the positions of each of the wires is illustrated as well. Now these positions are often referred to as pinouts. So if you hear somebody talk about the pinouts of an RJ45, they're talking about how the wires are ordered in the RJ45 connector. And we'll get to in just a minute why the order is important in order for the cable to work as expected. But let's get a few basics out of the way first. In this diagram, you can imagine that the cable itself is down here. So, and it's running off somewhere else. And you'll notice we have four colors, four base colors. Green, orange, blue, and brown. And we reuse those colors but we add white to it in order to stripe. So in order to color all eight cables with four colors, we use the same colors, but four of the wires are actually striped with white. So green and white and green, orange and white and orange, blue and white and blue, okay? Another good thing to note is we have the pairs indicated on the top here. Pair four, one, two, and three. And you'll notice that each of the pairs uses the same base color. Each wire in the pair uses the same base color. So your green and white is going to be paired, twisted, with the green. Likewise, the orange cable is going to be twisted with the orange and white. So if you have a pair, it should use the same base color. There are two standards for the pinouts. This is the 568A, and it's referring to the order of the wires. There's another one, and that's called 568B, and I'll bring that up here. And why don't I just pull it down so you can more easily see. The only difference here is the green and the orange colors are swapped. So if you're looking at an RJ45 and you see green in the 1 and 2 position, that is 568A. If you see orange, it's 568B. 
we'll just go ahead and continue to talk about 568A. The concepts apply to both. Okay, so for 10 and 100 base Ethernet, we want to talk about two pairs, because that's all we need, one to transmit and one to receive. So a PC will operate differently than hubs and switches, and you'll see in a moment why that makes sense. So when we talk about the pairs, pair three, which is pins one and two, that's used by a PC, a network interface card on a PC, in order to send data. It uses that pair to send. Now, if it's sending to a hub or a switch on that pair, that means that the hub or switch actually is going to receive the data on pair three. So hubs and switches receive on pair three, and NICs, PCs, send on pair three. Well, information is going to be sent back from the hub or switch to the PC, and so hubs and switches use pair two, which is pins three and six, the orange ones, to send data to a PC, and a NIC uses pair two to receive data. So you can see the opposites, but it makes sense they're opposites because if I'm going to send on one pair, whoever I'm sending to has to receive on that pair. And if they send to me on a, on a different pair, then on that other different pair, I need to receive it. So it's different at each end. NICs operate differently than hubs and switches when it comes to sending and receiving of data. Okay? Let's go ahead and just take a look at a diagram to better illustrate this. So here we have a PC and we have an RTP cable connecting it to a hub or a switch. It doesn't matter. And I'm only illustrating two pairs, four wires, instead of all four pairs or all eight wires, just to simplify the diagram. So if the PC is going to send some data, the blue one, let's say, uh, the blue pair, it's going to go ahead and source the data and send it over that pair. Likewise, it's going to have to be received by the hub on that pair, so pair uh, three. And so if the hub or switch has data to send back to the PC, it's going to send it on pair two. And so in this example, that's the orange pair on the bottom there. And so it sends it on, on pair two, and likewise it has to be received on pair two by the PC. Again, that opposite concept of I transmit on one, you receive on the other. You transmit on one, I receive on the other. So that is all there is to it in terms of UTP cabling, folks. So let's go ahead and summarize what we've covered today. Okay, so to summarize, we touched briefly upon the makeup of the cable, an outer jacket with eight internal wires, each color-coded for easy identification. The wires are terminated by RJ45 connectors, and there are eight pin positions for each of the eight wires, and you can see examples of the ports for an RJ45 on, on hubs and switches and NICs and routers. We talked a little bit about transmitting data and why the pairs are twisted, and that's to uh, lessen the effects of magnetic fields that are created when currents run over each of the wires in a pair. And we touched a little bit upon the number of twists and the tightness of those twists and how those dictate the interference levels and the performance levels of a UTP cable. Also, we touched upon the different categories of UTP, category 3, 5, and 5E. Note there are other categories, 1, 2, 4, and 6. Have a look at those on your own if you can. And we touched base a little bit upon the pinouts and the positions of the wires in the cable, why they're so important, the different colors we use, the two different standards for the ordering of those colors. And then we looked at a brief example on transmission of 10 100 base T between a PC and a hub or switch. And that's everything you need to know about UTP cabling. Thanks for watching.